Today we're talking about watercolor supplies. So let's get started on brushes. First, I've got round brushes, and these are what you're going to use most of the time. I like the Princeton brand of round brush, but there's a lot of great brushes out there, so you can take a look and see what you like. This is just what I use. There are professional brushes, and then there are student quality brushes. And obviously the professional brushes are going to cost more, but they'll be better quality and give you better success. So whenever you're ready, you'll want to eventually go to a professional uh, brush. The I've got a size 12 round by Princeton here and a size eight. The numbers get smaller, the brushes get smaller. And it's just thicker at the base, thinner at the top. They hold a good amount of water and it gives you a lot of different options with the sizes. Another one that I like is, this is a Princeton Neptune Quill brush. You may even have heard, have heard of a mop brush. And it just holds even more water and it's nice for flowy backgrounds when you have more space to cover. So primarily, if you've got a few sizes of round brushes, you're gonna be good to go. Second, we'll talk about paper. And paper is pretty important. You're gonna to wanna to have a good quality paper so one of the most common is 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. 140 pound just means how thick the weight of the paper. Copy paper that you put in your printer is about 60 pound to 80 pound, depending on the quality of the paper. So there gives you, your typical drawing pad of paper is 60 to 80 pounds. But if you were to add water to that paper, it would start to wrinkle and warp. And we don't want that of our artwork. It makes it more difficult to paint and doesn't look as fine. So when you get to 140 pounds, you're getting better at the ability for the paper to take on the water. If your paper is small like this, so this is a five by seven, they come in a pack of sheets like this. I like it just because I can pull a sheet out and get painting. Because it's small, I don't have to really worry about the warping too much with this. If I were to paint a larger painting on 140 pound paper, I may notice some warping. And there are ways to work around that. One is taping your paper down with watercolor tape, or if you wanted to Google stretching your watercolor paper. It's not actually stretching as in pulling. It has to do with pre-soaking your paper. I don't like to do that. So if I have a larger painting, I use a different kind of paper that I'm gonna talk about. My smaller paintings though are great on these five by seven, 140 pound cold press sheets. Cold press means that it has these little divots in it. It's called the tooth. Basically, it's what's the texture of your paper. Cold press is um, sort of actually the middle ground one. There's actually another texture of paper called rough and you can imagine it's got even more divots and texture in it. And then hot press watercolor paper is just smooth. And there are differences to working with cold press with the little divots versus the hot press and the smooth finish. The cold press paper actually, most watercolor artists prefer it, I think, because the little divots allow for the water to sit on the surface of the paper a little bit longer the watercolor paper that's hot press, it actually tends to dry a little bit faster. I like the cold press paper for watercolor paintings and I like the hot press paper for mixed media art. So, and I don't actually use the rough texture very often, but it can be fun. Another option for you in your paper is to get a watercolor journal where you can practice your paintings in a book. And I like this just when I get an idea, I can, um, kind of just practice in it and then maybe do, it's like a sketchbook for a painter. Kind of nice options. Um, good for practicing. See, I take notes sometimes what I did. So it's just the same paper that I just showed you. It just happens to be in a book. So if you wanted to have that, that's an option. And now, moving on to two other options of paper. The, this is also 140 pound. So this one is a larger pad, obviously, it's nine by 12. But this is a watercolor block. So it's still um, 
comes in different sizes and weights. This one's 300 pound, and that's what we're gonna talk about now. It's still cold press, so it's got the textured surface that we like. This particular is a block because the pages are sealed in. There's a gum finish that's got the papers attached to each other right here on the bottom. So when you're painting, everything is staying um, attached to it. You have to take a palette knife and actually work it in and remove the paper that way because it's attached at the bottom. Uh, 300 pound is obviously, if we just talked about 140 pound and a coffee paper is 60 pound, you can imagine the 300 pound paper is very thick. So that is this one here. So uh, this is just like I just showed you the block where it was attached into the notepad. This is a free uh, loose sheet that I had that I um, have already um, cut into um, a smaller piece for me to work on. And I like this because it's got two different sides. I've got my bird that I do here for painting later. So this one, this side's a little more of a surface to it versus this side is a little bit smoother. Remember we talked about cold press versus hot press, so this has got a little bit of um, a way to try both because this one's a little bit smoother. So, all right, so that's watercolor paper. Now we actually talk about watercolor paint. So I'm gonna show you my very messy palette here. I've been painting today. So I've got all the colors I've been mixing. This is the one that I like right now. It's um, my Prima Marketing. I have several different versions of this. This is the Classics. They sell a lot of different um, ones with different paint colors in it, but there's always a little um, paper in there that you can do little test paints on. This is a great, just basic paint set. I like it also that I can take it with me when I go places. So that's a good, you'll see me teach most of my classes with that one. Another fun option if you're in creating quite an investment because you've decided water, watercolor is your thing, then Dr. P.H. Martin Fine Art Hydro watercolor is pretty awesome and it just looks like a little ink bottle, but it's watercolor and it's concentrated kind of like um, Concentrated laundry detergent or something or concentrated dish soap. Is that what it is? Where you don't have to add as much of it Just the tiniest drop and you can have a super bright color even when you start to add your water but this is a big financial investment the uh, Prima marketing watercolor sets are like $20 or less this is a great option. All right, so we talked about watercolor, watercolor paper, brushes. Let's finish it up with a couple other tools that I like for doing some sketches before. I like mechanical pencils. Any mechanical pencil that you like is fine. This one's an Artisto, Aristo, DK, but I'm not, not too picky. I just like mechanical pencils. I like the way they draw. So, but any pencil that you like is good. Pencils do come in different grades. They have little numbers on the side. Um, this is an HB, so it's a middle of the road with the um, value of the, of the pencil. Then I've got an eraser. So this is a special kind of eraser. It's got that sticky tack kind of feeling like gumminess. These are really great because they're very gentle on watercolor paper and you can kind of like put them into the shape of what you need to erase. Uh, another eraser that is great for getting into details is any kind of pen eraser tip where it looks like a pencil. You can get down and get into some detail there. And then two pens, because sometimes I like to draw with a pen or outline my artwork with a pen afterwards. One is a Uniball Vision. This is a fine tip, and they're in office supply stores in Walmart, really easy. You can get them in different colors too. And then a Micron 01. I sometimes use a Micron 05.52. That would also be a, a 0.5, and that is even thinner. So this is, um, Micra is made by Sakura, a Japanese company that's really known for wonderful um, products. The two pens, really important is they're both waterproof. So that means that if when I'm watercoloring, I decide to draw with the pen first, and then I watercolor over it, it won't activate the pen. Not all pens are. I have a pen here that I really love these um, Stadler fine liners. These are great, especially if you like to color with pens with the coloring book um, thing that's bad right now. But these activate in water. So I've noticed when I draw and then I my paintbrush hits it that it makes the pen bleed. It could be a cool effect, but if it's not what you're going for, it'll be a bummer. Okay, 
So that's a little bit about watercolor supplies. Oh, I forgot one more thing. I totally love this. You're gonna love this too. This is um, also made by Uniball, which was the same people that made this one. It's called a Signo and it's a white pen. Really cool here. So I'll show you on this one. I just, this is one of the little watercolor. You take your pen and you can add little um, highlights, a little white on my leaves here. I'll add a little white highlight there and here and there, a little highlight on the flower here. Um, it's just a little bit of white and it goes really cool on top of elements. Like I could add a few little dots on top of my heather and you'll see them pop up. Um, it's really cool. So it's a nice little addition to your watercolor box. Okay. Thanks guys. I'll talk to you later.